So today we have Orzala Kudasi from Make It Happen Online Marketing Services with us. And uh, welcome, Orzala. Uh, thank you for having me. It's a great pleasure. We've had the pleasure of working with you for a number of years. So I'm really interested in our audience getting to know who you are. As a member of our expert network, you help small business. And I know that's your business is to help small businesses really get their email marketing and social media management under control so they can focus on what they do best. So we're happy to have you here today. And I uh, just wanna give you a little bit of a bio on Orzala. Growing your online presence is what Make It Happen does best. Make It Happen is a boutique agency that helps small businesses develop and implement an effective digital marketing strategy using social media and direct email marketing techniques to engage and develop relationships with your customers. They lighten your load by managing your online marketing plan that includes social media posting, blog posting, website updates, online event listings, and even digital email newsletter creation and scheduling. They will also find and curate content for you, create infographics and images with a variety of digital mediums. As many of you know, BACD strives to be the go-to resource for businesses in the Durham region. We are one of 53 centers across Ontario that are here to serve entrepreneurs. Our mission is that entrepreneurs we serve achieve business success. And you can find out a bit more about BACD's advisory service, networking events, workshops at BACD.ca. So Azala, thank you. I'm glad I was able to introduce you and let people kind of know a little bit about you and about BACD. But I'd love to ask you the question is like, what inspired you to start your own business? Well, thank you for the introduction, Teresa. Mm, what inspired me to start my own business? Uh, my, my business has been a bit different than a lot of people the way it started. Um, I started it, I, I consider myself a true entrepreneur because the business started at 11 o'clock at night. That's when it was registered um, right. <laughs> while my two kids were sleeping. Um, the biz and I had done no research. I had uh, no, like I had not consulted with anybody. I didn't know anybody. I was only two years into living in Durham region. I moved from South Etobicoke. Uh, I was basically a stay at home mom for a lot, for the two years of it. Prior to that, I don't work, I did work for five years in the marketing um, field and my education background is in business. So um, when the thought of having my own business or actually going back to work came um, through, I had to do something that had uh, required minimum investment in yes. terms of, I didn't have a lot of cash flow sitting around to invest in a big business. Uh, I needed something that I could work around the hours, my, my hours, my kids' hours, um, which again, my business fit perfectly, but also I wanted to do something that can uh, apply what I have and my experience and my education to it as well. In terms of the, um, in terms of why I got into a particular uh, field, in terms of why it's for me, my business is very action oriented and we do it for you is I have a friend and they own uh, three or four cell phone accessory stores and repairs. So I always uh, basically heard them complaining about them, their employees, how it was so hard to find good employees. Um, for them, they were always struggling to find good employees to be their assistant, but also to just, day-to-day -day stuff. So I knew that that was a struggle for a lot of smaller businesses where, again, they weren't there to watch the employees. They weren't there. They were uh, managing multiple stores that they needed somebody that was reliable, uh, but also they took their job seriously. Right. So that's when I thought that combining my, um, ex my experience and my education, and I thought I would go into this field. But the, the crazy thing is that, I don't know if you remember, I didn't start it as somebody that specialized in social media, even though my background is in marketing, I started as a virtual assistant. I do remember, yes. So the business started as a virtual assistant with a specification on marketing support. So social media was a part of it, but it was more posting, not more in depth. Um, it was more posting social media, doing newsletters, but it was more, and then a lot of administrative tasks. Right. But as I got into the business, so within the first year, it's changed because what I found out that once I was in the business, the 
people that had hired me basically were, were looking more for marketing ideas, how to market their business. Right. And since I thought I had the, um, the background already, so why not ba basically start adding that services into it? And I'm sure for you, you've noticed it's not being like, this is the idea I had and here it is. It's gone like this, you know, up and down, up and down, off of this service, take this service away. Then people want this and then they don't want it anymore. And I'm sure it's pivoted and changed over the times, right? It has. And, and that's what it's been. Like, I haven't been scared of the change, like the pivot. It's okay. If it's taking me in a good direction, I, I go. So I basically go based on where my customers want to take me. Right. And so you work with them. Tell me, um, how did you know that the service would be needed? Like as you started running this business, because you thought virtual assistant, this is it. I've got it made, right? <laughs> yes. So I thought that's the, the, re yeah, the reason with the virtual assistant was like, well, I'm somebody that have my own business. I take things ter seriously. It's my reputation. It's not an employee where I, I might not care and want to, you know, jump on and go take another opportunity. Uh, so I thought this would be a perfect fit and it came based on, on that need that I heard for small business owners. But in terms of this specific service, it was again, when I started, so I landed my first client within the two months. Lovely. Um, yes. Uh, so I, I was lucky that way, but. You worked it. I felt really lucky. You work hard in what you do. Um, but what I found out that it was, what she really needed was more the, marketing side of it right they needed more like a lot of them they didn't have that per, like that person that can help them with marketing ideas they needed somebody to bring fresh ideas be creative into their especially into their online presence right, right. Uh, and also i guess my age played a factor because when i started a business i was in my um late 20s so they wanted a fresh younger person for their social media to kind of bring more ideas into the table right. for them very cool i'd love to i know that you offer a whole bunch of services and i'd love you just to tell people a little bit about it i like the idea like we haven't talked about i know you offer workshops you do some online stuff but you also have an audit that you do i'd love to just hear a bit more about those sure so um like a scope of our services is basically social media marketing is the bigger portion of it especially management side of things but in that umbrella, there's a lot of other stuff goes. And we also do email marketing um, right now. I do a lot of workshops. So those are for a lot of people that want to learn how to do it themselves. And I also have a package that's called uh, DIY Social Media Makeover. So those, it's a six weeks program that uh, I work one-on-one -on -one for six weeks, once a week for an hour that mm -hmm. helps small business owners basically um, with, DIY. You wanna, yes. Would you want to do it yourself? Well, let's let's do it. The social media audit was something that I kind of came up with it. Um, I think it's been two years now, and uh, and ended a pitch at an at an event that I was the sponsor, and it took off from there. So it's really <laughs> it's but something. The audit is really important. Tell people what they get out of that audit because it so, really helps them as a business owner decide what they need to do. So the audit is really something that's beneficial from both sides, from somebody that wants to just get an audit. What they get is I have a questionnaire for them. They fill out the questionnaire and also they fill out all their social media links for me to look at, including their website. I do that on my own time. And then we book an hour time where we sit down and we go through all the stuff that needs to be improved on their online, with their online presence and then all the suggestions that I have. Right. So, so it's it, really worth the money because I think how much do you charge for that? It's for a one twenty five for an hour. Yeah. So to me, I look at an audit as a way that we we have to go to a doctor every year, right? Uh, we it's a checkup of your social online presence. That's what it is. You need to, but I recommend it every three months. You want to look at everything. Uh, like we have people with their for example, professional headshots that's been sitting there for years, right? Yeah. Where you, you meet them in person and you don't even recognize them. It's the same person you have online. So even like things like that, where it makes a big difference, but we don't realize it. Right. So I, I look at it in that, in that sense as well. I look at their content strategy, like for example, with Instagram hashtags they're using, their bio, 
uh, what, so what they're saying, it's just an overall checkup of their entire online presence. Very cool. I think it's a very worthwhile service because um, we don't always know, you need an outside person to look at those things. We don't always know what we're doing and if what we're doing is even effective. So there's another service that you offer that I thought would be, I don't know if it's a service, but it's a product. You have a Facebook group. And yes. I just love to know, I know a little bit about it. Maybe tell us why even a Facebook group, why should, is it something businesses should have? So Facebook group is something that's big this year. And last <laughs> year. Facebook, yes. And last year, but it has been bigger this year due to the, the recent, the algorithm changes a few months ago where Facebook was like, we're focused on private, like having private conversations. People are having private conversations or the fact that they want to make people feel like they belong in a community. Yeah. And the Facebook groups are a perfect way of doing it because um, they are in a private, like if you want a closed group, it is very private. Only the members can basically see the things. If you want a secret group, it doesn't even, it's not even searchable on Facebook. And then there's obviously the public group. So the Facebook group also helps in terms of what Facebook does is they give a preference over a Facebook group than a Facebook page for uh, in the algorithm too. It's like in terms of the suggestions, they suggest the groups more than they would with the pages. Uh, it also helps you to be an expert in your field, whatever that is, right? Because mm -hmm. the people, all of a sudden, it's more intimate environment that they get to know you in the group setting. Yeah. So how do people fit this in on top of like all the other business they're doing? You know, how? how? And maybe so, other businesses that groups don't make sense for. No, they don't. So then that for them, the group is not a good way to go. Or what you can do is you can have groups that are not really related to what you do but they are an interest of your target market so uh, like i i know some trap like some uh, mortgage agents might have something a group that's locally yeah or a local like a yeah like a durham region locally based group where right. it has nothing to do with mortgage but it's their target market that's hanging out there and they're basically uh the admin of the group so for people that are not directly related to that group they can't do that in their field they can do they can come up with something like that but at the same time i always say that you need to know why you're creating a group so yeah. what's the reason behind it and what are you trying to accomplish with it right. uh it's you don't want to create a group because facebook is favoring groups right now the facebook algorithm where they're giving it preferences that's not a good reason to do it um it, there has to be a reason behind it and what is your return on investment because it is very time consuming especially if it's a new group in the beginning where you need to give a lot of value. Right. Uh, yes, because you can't be selling to them right away if they don't know you yet and they haven't seen the, the giving part of it. Mm -hmm. Good point. Um, what are you doing? What's your group? Does, can anybody join it? So my group is called um, a Step Up Your Social Media Game. It's for any women entrepreneur that's um, looking to step up their social media game it doesn't matter if you don't even have a presence yet it doesn't matter if you have some and you want to take it to the next level it's for anybody depending on what level um you are in that it's it's a group that is it's a very engaged group as well uh the group that i'm in and there's a lot of again and it's also a good opportunity to network so if you're in a business that you want to um have people from other areas that you want to connect with i got member of somebody there from france yeah. <laughs> Cool. So I have members, yeah, I have members from all over Canada and the U.S. And then there's a few people from like France and Australia, I think, there as well. And what do you do with your group to keep it interesting? Like, are you doing things all the time? So I see a lot of people in terms of the groups. Um, I think a lot of people make social media very complicated than it is, right? I keep it simple. And again, I have a particular goal with my group. For me, all I'm doing is just live training. So every week I'll, I'll do a live training and then once a month I'll have a guest expert in the other subject areas. Because a lot of the times people like social media is not all our business. There's yeah. other areas of the business that we need to keep up with. So, and, and I'm not an expert in those areas. So I bring other women experts to kind of talk about those topics. I love that. Um, I know I had the opportunity to be on it right near the beginning. I think I was talking about sales success in business. So I That's appreciate great. the opportunity there. Now, tell me what are, do you think there's a pattern or a formula for an entrepreneur to be successful? Oh, <laughs> that question. There's a pattern. 
Well, this is based on really your ability to see like the clients you're working with yeah. are all small businesses, you know, have you seen who's successful and who's not and perhaps what it is that takes? To, honestly, I think the number one, like I haven't found a particular formula that obviously fits everybody. Everybody's yeah. situation is different, but I would say a majority of people that something that they kind of need to work is the mindset and, and including myself, I've gone through my own journey with that, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think mindset, I mean, you hit, I think you hit the nail on the yeah. head. Like, your mindset literally drives everything you do in your life, whether it be personally or professionally. And if your mindset can be strong, be positive and resilient, then you can be that in your business too. It, it is, especially when it comes to social media, there's a lot of people that they don't want to be seen. It's, it's very hard to have a successful online presence when you don't want to be seen. So for them not wanting to be seen, again, it's a mindset block that they have to work on. It's they don't want to post, so they don't want to be consistent. It affects in a lot of ways. Like we don't, oh, we don't see it. Like when it's like when they go to a doctor, it's about the symptoms, right? They're just like, oh, I don't right. know what to post, or I, I'm so posting so inconsistently. But once you sit down with them and talk more, you find out that a lot of it is related to their mindset. It's just they're scared of being out there. They're scared of social media, especially the the clients that I work with, where they're not from the social media time, right? Yeah. So helping them be successful by thinking about, you can do this, you know, be strong. And there's so many resources online that you can reach out to, to really work on that whole confidence piece, but also, you know, get out there, step outside your comfort zone and make it uncomfortable for you because that's how you grow is when you're actually uncomfortable. That's right. You know, I have another question I have for you. Um, how do you market your business and like what's been successful for you? So I have used, I guess, different ways of uh, marketing my business. Good. Um, and just to kind of, I always try, but everything I do really, I measure it. Yeah. So if I'm doing a, like if I'm doing a boot at a trade show, I always have an offer. Then I basically, there's a call to action there. There's an offer. Then I can measure how much I made directly from that boot or how many leads and follow up I got. Right. Uh, that way I know if it's worth the next time to do it or it's something that I should be doing more of. And, and same thing my, like with my speaking engagements is the same thing with the workshops is as yeah. well, the same thing. So there's always that piece of it. But what I find more successful is definitely networking. So yeah. that's how I landed the, the first, uh, my first client within two months is it was because of networking, yeah. but also speaking and being out there. Yeah. So speaking has been very like speaking engagement workshop has been very successful in my business for myself. Uh, so marketing myself that way where I'm not really um, marketing myself and uh, it's I'm popular for giving a lot of information. So a lot of value. Yes. Where the sales become very easy because a lot of people that come to me after my workshop, they're sold. Yes. Well, because you haven't pitched them and you haven't tried to sell them, but you have actually delivered value. And then you, you know, you're real. People want to buy from someone who's real and who comes across as trustworthy and credible and knowledgeable and professional, right? That, that's right. Yeah. That's very important. Very important. Tommy, do you have any favorite productivity apps or tools or sites that you use for your business that you love to share? Prog productivity apps let me see i to be honest i use just my phone and the timer so i have like over the past like past few uh months i've started doing time blocking uh, and and google calendar <laughs> where yeah. i just basically put it in my calendar and when you when you can have it in a view where it ha it's color blocked right yes so if you're somebody visual that likes that color component of it, it actually, it helps you where I have like my personal ones in a different color. And then my business one is a different color. So I know is, uh, which, so I've been using that and I've just been using my, um, phone timer to just yeah. time block so I can stop. So I'm working on, a, uh, on something like for 20 minutes and then taking a break, right. And doing the same thing again and taking a break. Did you find that works for you? It, it does like it might not work for every, anybody else, but it's been, it's been working for me. I find it to be effective. Well, you're just the second person that I've interviewed that has said that, you know, time blocking has really worked for them. 
and then to set that timer of working and then taking a break and getting a coffee or walking up, up or whatever. And so I find that interesting. And like, I've interviewed quite a few people and um, it's nice to hear that you do that as well. I think it's really important. We're, we're so distracted today as people, you know, all the messages coming at us, all the apps and notifications and ding bells, like we really need to take time to focus on our work. Otherwise it doesn't get done. That's right. I, I have all my, like when I do that, I have my, like I try to have my phone at airplane mode so I don't get any notification, but I still have the timer and then I have notifications on my laptop. So I have disabled all of that. <laughs> Smart idea for sure. Yeah. I like to do that too. Now, do you ever feel fearful in your business? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Don't we all, right? Yeah. And it doesn't look I like it on the other end, but when I talk to another entrepreneur, you, you know, you feel like they have it all together, but when you talk to them, they still have the fear, no matter uh, what, at what stage of their business they're in. Right. It's just the fears are different. You know, when you're in the early stages, it's a different fear. And then as you get uh, more successful, uh, it's just the fears changes. Right. What would you, how do you manage your fear? Uh, by doing it, facing them. I find like I have find that that's what's been helping me. Just the more I do it, the more I get like I get comfortable. So a right. lot of the and less fear, fear you me, have because you've stepped into it. That's right, right. So a lot of the fear I had was like around like coming. It's again, it's, I wanted to be in my comfort zone and getting out of your comfort zone. So those are some of the fears. But uh, by actually doing it, yeah, it, it helped me to get over it. And then once you do that, it's then it's just not a fear anymore and it just becomes a normal thing. <laughs> so Tommy, I have a question for you. Um, what advice would you give to someone who wants to start their own business? What advice would I give to someone? I, I would tell them not to go the route I did. <laughs> Which route was that? <laughs> Which was just like, be like, I'm opening a business. Let's just register this online. I, I didn't, like I said, I didn't have any market research. I didn't know what was going on. Um, I just kind of jumped into it, ordered my cards from Vistaprint, <laughs> searched for some networking events. And then the first one I think I got was one of the income tax, uh, tax seminars here. At BACT? <laughs> yes. That's how I was introduced to BACT. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so it was, I think it was run by Ross Libby. And then you um, went, holy hell, I haven't got all these other pieces I need to do. I know. And I'm like, oh, there's a whole other world out here that I, I taught, you know, I could just do it on my own. So I would say to, I would say to seek out resources. That's very important. So somewhere like here, BACD, right? Where um, you have people that can help you and do it the proper way. I kind of went the other way around. I jumped into it and then I, I learned as I went. Uh, it's, definitely a longer way of doing it. You know what? I did the same thing when I started my first business. I knew there was a BACD around, but I still went, it wasn't my first business. It was probably about my third or fourth at this point, but I still thought I, I didn't do the market research. I just thought, Oh, my friends and family, they love what I'm selling. So they were buying it. And then Lots of friends started buying it. So I thought, oh, that's cool. I'll just go and, you know, book a, a table, a booth at like the National Woman Show and the yoga conference. And I'll just start selling that way. And I actually did quite well. And then, you know, had to like backtrack and learn all the things as I went. But um, some people just do that. Like you do do that. And then I realized that if I wanted to grow, I needed more. And I didn't necessarily have the knowledge of that and needed to learn it. Right. And that's when I reached out to places like this to start to find that information. I always like to think that the entrepreneur will find us if they start Googling, you know? Yes, that's right. And also not to me, like I, just not being stuck in that. So they don't just keep coming until they perf they have a perfect everything before. They Nothing's ever perfect. A lot of us, we get caught up in that, right? As well, yes. where we want to, we want to have everything perfect before the website is out, before we can start advertising. Um, yes. So making sure that you don't get caught up in that as well. Very, very true. I agree with you there. So that's good. I good advice. Now, um, you mentioned that you use networking as one of your ways to develop your business. Um, what would you say are some of the tips you could give someone about networking if they were going to get started? I'm sure it was scary for you. Oh God, it was. 
I remember walking in my first one and I was like, okay, I'm ready to leave now. I was just intimidated by, to me, it was more like an age fat, like to me, it was like a you felt young. I'm just like, well, why would they need to hear from me? Like, why do they want to hire me and do business with me when they have so many years of experience, right? Right. Um, to me, like networking, just doing that, not looking at them as a lot of people, like I have sat with new clients where they feel like, oh my God, like, you know, they feel like I have it all together and they're intimidated by, like, by me going like, oh, I don't want to feel stupid or I don't want to say something yeah. that I sound stupid. To me, at the end of the day, I feel like we're all in it together. Like I said in the, uh, before, it's everybody has the fears. They just have, they might be, they might be in business longer. Their fears and their struggles are different than somebody that's just starting. But we all have something in common, which is this, we all want to make it, right? In terms of uh, yeah. running our business and making it successful. So at the end of the day, it's just to me, they're all, we're all people, we're all human. So that kind of helps with the intimidation, right? When the first you go, so you're not just standing in a corner and just waiting for somebody to come and say hi to you. It's true. I'm, I'm also a little shy when I go out to networking events. So I feel the same way. But you I mean, would never know it because I'm trying to be, you yeah. know, someone else. <laughs> you gotta, you have to, te I'm an introvert, right? So I've taught myself to be an extrovert when I want to be. And then I go back to being an introvert again. So <laughs> it's, it's like, I find it just, if I don't know people, it's just, you're scared, right? But um, one of the ways I deal with it is like to go and find that person that's by themselves and, and, and talk to them, ask them questions. But yeah, it can be scary sometimes. I've felt that way before. If I walk into a room where I don't know anybody, well, then I always look for someone that I is by themselves and go and chat to them. It's kind of a little bit more intimidating to break into a group of people. So I, I normally pick it is, the, yeah. lone, the lone rangers on the side. <laughs> and, and like for me also now, like to me, it was more intimate. I guess it was a bit hard talking to myself with somebody that about myself that I like, I didn't know. So it's more, I ask the questions. I let them more talk about themselves yeah. it helps until you get to know them a bit and then you kind of warm up that's it i think that's one of the best things you can do everybody likes to talk about themselves so by asking them a whole bunch of questions i think that's a great idea i have another last question for you what do you see as the coming trends in social media i mean that's a big question i know but uh, it's changing every day it's like i yeah it's 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 a very um fast change like fast pace in terms of the the changes that comes in uh, a lot of the times right um it's one of the biggest trend that i see is more like being more human online and that's something that's um again that that would be a mind block for a lot of people that are struggling with it is to kind of show your human side so humanizing your brand a bit so it's not just uh you're hiding behind your logo because a lot of the people now they want to know the person behind the logo or right. or the co the company culture or the team that's behind the logo mm. um and those are like the the posts the content that's all around that where it's very humanized uh content it does really well as well online than right. just the generic ones because a yeah. lot of us we just stick to stock photos um just yes because we're hiding right we're just like oh well i don't need to be there um we don't like show our day be a lot of people are interested to see the day-to-day -day stuff because at the end of the day social media is being social right right so just i i find that a lot of that, that that's going in that way where it's something that a lot of people should kind of think about in terms right. of um just humanizing their brand and i i like that myself to kind of show that side of you because people want to do business again with people that they know and trust and mm -hmm. how can they do that if you're hiding behind your logo and the stock photos good point um i know you have some workshops coming up here at bacd lucky for us can you remind me what they are okay so we have uh one coming up for pinterest pinterest for sm uh, for your small business growth and then we have a facebook one coming up as well so these are the two workshops that are uh, coming up for October for this month. Great. And then in November, we have the Do It in Durham Week, which is celebrating entrepreneurship here in Durham Region. We run about 40 to 50 events, and it's really to celebrate, learn, connect, grow your business. And it's a wonderful, wonderful week. And I hope that you guys can be there. 
so many businesses get started, they get growing, they meet friends, they find financial help. They, they, there's just so many opportunities for you. We have so many different types of events and Orzala is going to be doing an event during that week and it's on ha hashtag marketing and Instagram stories. Yeah. I think it's a really awesome. great workshop to be at. And it's, your workshops are always sold out anyway. So it'll be <laughs> awesome. People register. It's on our website at bacd.ca slash events. And also just our menu buttons right at the top has events on it. So Orzala, thank you so much for your time. It's been wonderful to chat with you. And uh, look, we always look forward to continuing to work with you. So thank you. Well, thank you so much for having me again. My pleasure. Thank you.